So you can either choose to do a vineyard like this where you clear cut the entire thing and you, you believe in the drain age, right? The age of draining all, the drain age, or you believe in the retain age. And this is a vineyard in, on, it's called Davis Bynum Winery on West Side Road outside of Healdsburg, Sonoma County, where we dug the earth up, piled it up in these berms that are on the contour, and then the vines are going to be planted up here, these little tubes. And these catch the storm water, slow it down, spread it out, sink it in the land, recharge it. It retains as a lens of water that grows over time due to the connection to the soil profile. And the grapes now have their irrigation delivered to them in situ where they want it to get at it all dry season. So you set up a dry farm vineyard that needs no groundwater, that doesn't dehydrate the aquifer so it keeps water in the creek for the fish, needs no electricity to pump it, Kit catches all sediment. It's organic and biodynamic. They only use compost teas now and cover crops. And because of the compost tea program, they have no mold problems and they're not spraying sulfur anymore. And it's a dry farm Pinot Noir that's worth more money and a higher quality that's fish friendly and integrated in groundwater recharging. Right? This is, it's just a design challenge, you guys. This is really basic stuff here. And it would be lots of fun programs, fish-friendly farming, salmon safe certification, Dan Kent's work out of Portland, organic. OEC is the eighth oldest certified organic farm in the state of California, CCOF. So we can do this. Agricult fish and farmers aren't at odds with each other. It's a false dichotomy. I love nothing more than a good pairing of a Chinook steak with a Pinot Noir from Russian River Valley. It's a great pairing. And my lifeboat, I want to have good wine and good fish. We can do this. this. That's what I'm looking for when I batten down the hatches of my lifeboat. It's just a, you don't, it's, the future doesn't have to be all like, eh, I'm eating weeds and hiding in a cave, right? <laughs> <clears throat> this is a farm. And this farm we designed, we dug these out with horses, with big old draft horses, super fun. And this, the farm is designed to harvest water first and then food. If you're not harvesting water, you ain't harvesting food. No water, no food. People are concerned about the food crisis food security, water insecurity will trump food insecurity by two and a half weeks. Three minutes with no air, you're dead. Three days with no water, you're bummed. Three weeks with no food, I could stand to lose a few, right? Water security is way bigger deal. So um, here's OAC. It's this 80-acre rectangle here. We live in this cluster. Occidental's there. Negri's all-you-can-eat Italian dinners are in there. <laughs> But we're 100% rainwater harvesting for the entire irrigated operation in this little pond here that then gravity feeds down to the gardens down there. Um, here's a little, little contour ditch like I showed you in the vineyard. This is 40 foot long, you know, 3 foot wide, 12 inches deep, intercepts water from a pipe here. It was dug by a bunch of permaculture students in about 45 minutes who were paying me to teach them to dig ditches on my property. <laughs> it's called stacking functions, right? <clears throat> no, it's um, place-based learning, I believe is what they call it, right? And this system, two years ago we got 94 inches of rain, and this because it has a pipe that's associated with an infiltrator, a drain system to dehydrate an area for a leach field. I can basically calc out what comes out of this pipe. And so this system was able to capture and put in the ground 600,000 gallons that winter. And our total water we take out for the community of 25 plus all the workshop participants for the year that we take out of the ground is 500,000 gallons. So I'm 100K in the blue onto my water budget with a 40 foot long ditch on contour and I have half a mile of these on the land. So we can pattern, and this is all this hand dug simple work really mellow stuff, but you got to put it back in the ground. This whole thing of taking it out, taking it out, and not putting it in has had some significant consequence on the planet. So, right, the San Joaquin Valley is the origin of what begat the Green Revolution that we foisted upon the planet of this agribusiness, you know, hybrid, monocrop-based, chemically dependent system of supposed agriculture. You can tell I have an opinion on that, right? Um, we can argue about it later for those who are offended. Um, so the San Joaquin Valley in 1925 was up here. 
due to groundwater extraction for irrigation, the entire valley section sank 29 feet because it floats on a bed of water. It's called mass subsidence. This is ubiquitous in all kinds of valley bottom areas where people are doing significant ag. And if it's not sinking, do people around here, do you guys have saline intrusion into little aquifers? Is that a discussion around here? It is in the Pajaro, in the Salinas, in the Carmel, in, in some of those systems. In, in Morro Bay, I was just in Morro Bay last night, Los Osos. Pumping groundwater, there's an osmotic barrier there with fresh water, and if you overpump it, then you get saline water coming in. And then you have to get a desal plant. Fascinating, iterative kind of circular logic, right? I'm all about desal. I'm totally up for desal. It's called the hydrologic cycle. The sun hits the ocean, desalinates, it makes clouds, and it rains back down. Live within your water budget. It's a desal plant, right? So you got to figure this out because the rope's getting longer, <laughs> right? Goodness. <clears throat> See, when you overpump these groundwater, you get these things called cones of depression, which I think looks like a dunce cap, and you're depressed with a cone on your head because you've run your well dry. And if you're pumping water that's adjacent to a stream, just because you put a straw on the ground does not mean that water you're taking out is true, quote, called groundwater. If that pumping affects the surface flow legally, any, <clears throat> anybody work for the Department of Water Rights in this room? Right? Legally, you are now pumping a surface water and you need an appropriative water right for that. And the amount of pumping that's going on under the guise of supposed groundwater in shallow adjacent wells that are drying up creeks and illegally doing it because they don't have the associated water rights, ugh, that's a really big deal. That's like fighting words there, <clears throat> right? You want to talk about, I mean, Mark Twain had it figured out and We've got the water battles in California that are coming are, have only begun, and it's a really interesting opportunity. I'm just trying to figure out, do we have to fight? Can we figure it out? Is there enough? Can we redo this system? Stormwater harvesting is about supply augmentation. Then we get into water conservation to harden demand, and can we meet a sustainable level in the middle without having to go to full-on battle over it? I don't know. I leave that question up to you guys.